colligative properties. Okay, so now we're going to start talking about the properties that are affected when a non-volatile solute is dissolved in a solvent. And so non-volatile solute means something that doesn't have a vapor pressure, or a high vapor pressure, I should say, and it's dissolved in some solvent. And basically, if you look at individual physical properties of that solution, that property is only going to depend on the ratio of the number of particles of solute to solvent in the solution, but not the identity of the solute. So in other words, you're going to be looking at how many particles are there in solution of this non-volatile solute versus the amount of solvent. So for a given volume of solvent, how many particles are in solution is what really matters, but not the identity or what they are. Okay, so there are four colligative properties. And the first one is boiling point elevation. So the boiling point of that solution is going to go up relative to the pure solvent. Freezing point depression. So the freezing point is going to go down relative to the pure solvent. The vapor pressure will be lower than the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. And then osmotic pressure. And so we are going to talk about how these arise and how we can explain them. Okay, so let's remind ourselves about pressure temperature phase diagrams. So we have external pressure on the y-axis, temperature on the x, and we are looking at the phases in relation to these temperatures and pressures. And remember, here we have the solid vapor coexistence line. We have the solid liquid coexistence line and the liquid vapor coexistence line here. We have the triple point here, the critical point here. And remember, the normal melting point and the normal boiling point are measured at one atmosphere. And if we take a dotted line down, then we can get the melting point temperature and a dotted line down from the liquid vapor coexistence line and we can get the boiling point temperature. Now, what happens when we add a non-volatile solute to the solvent that we are looking at? And so basically, colligative properties arise from thermodynamics. So this is what happens. So if we add a non-volatile solute, then these phase boundaries, or these liquid vapor coexistence line, solid liquid coexistence line, they move relative to the pure solvent. And notice the triple point also moved. And so these dotted lines on this phase diagram, those indicate the new phase boundaries for the solution. And the original solid lines are still the pure solvent. Now, notice that the liquid solid coexistence line has now shifted to lower temperatures, relatively speaking. Okay, and the liquid vapor coexistence line has shifted to higher temperatures in general. And so let's take a look at what happens to the melting point and the boiling point for the solution relative to the pure solvent. Okay, so let's look at the melting point first. So remember, right here, this was our normal melting point, and that's for the pure solvent. If we go over here to the dotted line indicating the solution, see the melting point is now at a lower temperature than it was for the pure solvent. Let's go over here and do the same thing with the boiling point. So here's the normal boiling point for the pure solvent. Once we add these non-volatile solute particles, then we end up with a higher boiling point. So you can see that they have been sh that it has shifted to higher temperatures. So the boiling point is elevated, the melting point is depressed or lowered. And we will also talk about vapor pressure lowering and the phase diagram, but we'll come back to this later on in the presentation. Okay, so let's talk about boiling point elevation first. So the boiling point of a substance, remember, 
is the temperature where the vapor pressure equals the external or usually atmospheric pressure. And remember that the external pressure doesn't change, but the temperature required to attain that vapor pressure is increased. So we can calculate the increase in the boiling temperature using this equation. And Kb is the molal boiling point elevation constant. And so you would look this up for a given solvent. And remember, colligative properties only depend on the relative numbers of particles, not what they are. So it doesn't matter about that. You just look it up for a given solvent. This small m is the concentration unit molality. And remember, this is moles of solute in kilograms of solvent. All right, so molarity, remember, is moles of solute in liters of solution. Molality, moles of solute in kilograms of solvent. A similar equation exists for the freezing point depression. So this is the decrease in freezing temperature. Kf is the molal freezing point depression constant. So again, you'd look it up for whatever solvent you're working with. And M is also the molality of the solute. Okay, so moles of solute, kilograms of solvent. Often you will have the volume of a solvent and you'll have to look up its density so that you can find the mass of solvent for molality. Okay, this is usually the trickiest part of this. So we, we need kilograms of solvent. Often we have a volume of solvent, but you can look up the density of that solvent at a given temperature. You know its volume, so you can just solve for mass. And then you can get your kilograms of solvent. Okay, so let's remind ourselves of equilibrium vapor pressure. So molecules in the li liquid phase so they are continuously vaporizing and condensing. And this is a closed container. So this vapor pressure is constant in time once we reach equilibrium. Let's use the phase diagram to rationalize this vapor pressure lowering as well. So remember, so here's one atmosphere. And here is our normal boiling point. And also remember at that boiling point, the vapor pressure is equal to the external pressure. So one atmosphere for the pure solvent, that is the vapor pressure of that solvent. Now, if we add a non-volatile solute, our phase boundaries have shifted, as we've discussed. And now, the vapor pressure of that solution is lower at that temperature than it was for the pure solvent. And that simply comes out of the fact that the phase boundaries have shifted for the solution relative to the pure solvent. So we use Raoult's law to calculate the vapor pressure of the, the solution relative to the pure solvent. And the vapor pressure of that solution only depends on the mole fraction of the solvent. Here's the vapor pressure of the solution. Here's the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. And here's the mole fraction of the solvent, which is often going to be something like 0.9 or 0.95. And even those are relatively concentrated solutions. So the mole fraction of the solvent. So how do we get that? So, so let's look at this picture here. OK, so we have our liquid molecules. And then here's our non-volatile solute distributed. So remember that these liquid molecules are continuously vaporizing and condensing. And notice that these non-volatile solute particles are essentially in the way. That's what's going on. So the more of them there are, the more the vapor pressure will, will be lowered. So our mole fraction just gives us the relative amount of liquid versus non-volatile solute. So moles of solvent divided by moles of solute plus moles of solvent. OK, so the part divided by the total. And this is the mole fraction of the solvent. OK, so what about osmosis? Now, osmosis is kind of an interesting process. In this beaker, we have a semi-permeable membrane that separates 
the side of the beaker with higher concentration of solute particles. The other side has lower concentration of solute particles. The solute particles cannot cross this semi-permeable membrane. So they're trapped on this side or on this side. But the thing that can cross is the solvent. So the system wants to reach a point where we have relatively equal concentrations, and equal would be ideal, equal concentrations of solute on each side of that semi-permeable membrane. So solvent moves from the side of lower concentration of solute to higher concentration to try to dilute it. Okay, and so this is the process of osmosis. Now, osmotic pressure is the amount of pressure required to stop that flow of solvent from less concentration to higher concentration. And we can write an equation that's very similar to the ideal gas law for osmotic pressure. So basically, if I didn't have this pi here for osmotic pressure, we would have PV equals NRT because this pi represents osmotic pressure. And so everything else is the same. So V is the volume in liters, N is the moles of the solute, R is the gas constant, want to make sure that units match, and T is the temperature in Kelvin. And if we rearrange this guy, so let's go ahead and create a concentration unit here, moles in a volume of solvent. Okay, so now that's a concentration. We still have the gas constant times temperature, and now our osmotic pressure is equal to the concentration of the solution times R times T. And this concentration is in molarity. All right, so I will post example problems for all three lectures separately.